All right, guys, we are back. I am so excited because you guys are listening to, uh, I guess you're tuning in. I mean, I hope you are. Right, Tom? Well, they wouldn't be hearing. It's like a tree falling in the middle of the woods. They wouldn't hear what you're saying unless they were listening to it. Love you guys, and today you are gonna be in for such a funny fucking story. Yeah, I thought it was a blast too. At this point in our relationship, we are about to embark upon our first time getting on an airplane together. So obviously, you're gonna hear both our points of view. Yeah, and this wasn't it wasn't a pleasure trip. It wasn't <laughs> a vacation of any sense. It was a trip. Tommy goes, if you're going to be on reality TV, you got to find something to do. You love Pablo. You always talk about Pablo. You need to create a foundation, a legacy for Pablo. So off we go to the World Pet Expo in Orlando, Florida. Well, listen, she's she's kind of oversimplifying things. You know, if you're going to be on any of these type of shows, you should have some sort of products. You should have something out there that you're going to make ancillary money on. Of That's course. one of the advantages of, of, of being on these shows. At the time, she was very much into Pablo. She loved. She would still talk about Pablo. She would actually sing to Julio that the wrong dog died. Um, I don't want to talk about Pablo because I don't want to get sad. And all I'm willing to say about Pablo, and I'm not joking. Because Pablo I, was her I don't chihuahua. Wanna, I don't want to continue this story. I want to skip this part. Let's get back on track. Rather than talking about death, we're going to talk about our first trip to Orlando, which was the World Pet Expo, because you decided that it was important for me to have a legacy. Well, again, she's overstating the simple. It was timing. She got to continue to talk about Pablo a lot. This World Pet Expo, they only have it once a year, maybe twice, whatever. It's the biggest pet expo on the planet. It's the World and Pet Expo. Expo. Like it was, she should try to do something for Pablo. Why don't we go check this expo out and see if they we can f come home with an idea? You know, I, at the time I was thinking that she should do some sort of pet line, door collar, something like that. And I thought, wow, my boyfriend has entrepreneurial acumen. Like for me, I was impressed that I was not thinking about legacy and creating stuff that's important. And like, I remember feeling like, oh my God, he actually has a business mind and I so don't. And it was like a huge turn on to me that you had this entrepreneurial aspect to you because so far it was only what we knew up to that part that was mostly like having sex, making each other laugh, showing each other like who we are. But you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever you say. Do the women know what I mean? Like when you're getting to know a guy, you get to know a guy on different levels. And then when you get to know that he's taking us to Orlando of all places, which no one would ever, ever, ever travel to like a random city across the country. You do realize that Disney World's in Orlando, right? probably one of the most traveled to cities in the world. But like you showed me your chops on a side of you that I didn't know because I was getting to know different aspects of you, which was much more sexual. So the impetus for this trip is completely business related and was very spur of the moment. Like I had to take some time off of work, but as minimal time as possible. Uh, she had some things in her schedule. So it was very last minute, very spur of the moment. And it wasn't a romantic or a pleasure trip for That's our right. first trip. It was strictly business. And because of that, I planned and booked the trip. I wasn't looking for, you know, any type of extracurricular activities or anything like that. I was looking for as no frills as possible. And this is the first time, you know, traveling with my wife, who I love to death. But sometimes she's going to say things that she doesn't necessarily mean um, what especially do you mean? when you get into the, for example, when we were in the wooing phase that we talked about and, you know, the courting phase. Yeah. When we were wooing when you, each when other. When you cared about like impressing my friends, you fully did that. I'm talking about when we were just texting with each other. Okay. I would I told you how big a baseball fan I was. And mm -hmm. then I played softball all the time. And she told me, oh yeah, I'm a big softball player too. A big softball player. <laughs> Big softball I player. Am. I played high school. I played high no, school too. No, community I'm, center. Big no, softball. yeah, no. She said I played high school too. So one of the first things when we were together, um, my buddy Joe has a, a league that every now and then he would ask me to fill in, and they needed a girl because it was co-ed. So he, I said, you know, my girlfriend. She's a big <laughs> softball player. 
She's big soft, big time softball. Yeah, we're coming. We're coming down. We're going to come. Let's go. Let's go. We get to the field. Do I look like a girl that played high school softball? Because I'm, first of all, way too short. And I don't have the like the arm strength or the arm at all whatsoever. And you know that. None of that is true. First of all, she's very quick, like a jackrabbit. <laughs> very quick. Very like quick, a like a jackrabbit. <laughs> she's very, very quick. But we get to the field. <laughs> And she doesn't even know what way the bases go. <laughs> that's like, not you true. know, like that's what direction true. first is. No, that's she didn't know. She went, which way do I go? No. Which way do I go? No. That way? No, he that was. That way? Which no. way do I go? What that happened way? was. And they, these ruthless, ruthless animals that were in this Sunday beer softball league. They were. Threw this woman to the wolves. Yes. They made it be the catcher. Yeah. So she was literally I had involved. To throw every, in every in play. In every play. Yeah. And after every time she would catch the ball, she would <laughs> ask, who do I throw it back to? <laughs> who do I? Him. Him, right? Him, right? And I couldn't. Him, right? And I couldn't and make it the to bat. the pitcher's mound. she come up from to the, the catcher's no, spot. It's, she's like, lefty, so, I so she looks like she's throwing to, <laughs> to you know, right field, and she's throwing it the other direction. It's just, it was all, it was. <laughs> That's true. It, it definitely did not look like she had any experience playing any <laughs> softball on any type of organized level. So <laughs> she greatly exaggerated her softball capabilities. But she was quick, man. <laughs> she was quick, like a jackrabbit. She flew around them bases. What's your point um, of this story? Anyway, uh, I I digress. Sometimes no you know, shit. When you know my wife, you, your mind goes in different directions because there's a lot to it encompasses a lot. But going back to what I was saying with the Orlando trip, you weren't saying anything about Orlando at all. No, you I were, was saying that you literally you, didn't say a thing about Orlando except Pablo's pause is what no. Came well, out I was of it. saying that that you sometimes overstate your agreeance to something and when i booked this trip i booked it really no frills and she to sound cool and sound like she was a real down chick made it seem like yeah totally fine where we staying motel six <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah sure sounds great can't wait so each part of this trip was cheaper and no more frills than the next part. But the thing that you're saying is that you made a Hotel 6, a motel. It's terrible. Are you telling it me was very, that very, you tried to book the Motel 6? No, I'm trying to And like I tried it was sold make- out? Because the hotel that we actually stayed in was Motel 666. <laughs> but we have to tell the story in the way that it's starting from no, what at I, home. No, what I'm saying not is- Not in the belly of the trip. I'm talking about once we had the idea, for, when I- had the idea for the trip we planned it it was all real spur of the moment again this was not going to be a romantic trip usually the first trip that you take with a significant other is going to be one that like you're going to romance you know what i mean you're going to do something getting a getaway maybe going on uh to a beach we were going to the closest and cheapest hotel if there was a four seasons in orlando by the convention center that's not the hotel that wasn't even an option before you go there my thing is like I'm a woman who's into you and I'm like really excited because we're going on a plane together. So I want to like take a little walk down like the topic of how do you pack for your first time that you're going to be going to an airplane, going to a hotel, waking up together, being in a state that you haven't traveled to ever before, being excited about it. Even if it's business, it didn't matter because it was still with the guy that I just fell in love with and met and all of the stuff that's going on with us. And it's going to be like very much a test to the relationship. How do you travel? Right, Tommy? It's like a new experience on another level, like things that you don't know about the person is going to expose itself. And I have an example and I'll wait to share it. For me, I really was looking at it as this is just business. We're just going down there just to get a lay of the land, just to kind of, you know, see if there's anybody out there that we want to work with or, you know, what it entails. Just more of a fact-finding mission for me. Um, But what did you pack for that trip? Because as a woman, before you go on a plane, you know you're going to get airplane light. Before you go on a trip with somebody that you care about, you're going to make sure that the angle the sun is hitting your face when you wake up on a pillow from the dead of sleep, that you're going to 
Be You're right. Like, I forgot. It. What do you? I, I was pack? thinking about all that too. What do you pack? Do Definitely. you pack lingerie? Obviously, you want it to get sexy. Even though if it's a business trip, you're still going to be laying down and you're in that phase where like you want every time that you go into bed to be like showing off either your Calvin Klein thong underwear or your like silky white lace number that reminds you from the girl that Al Pacino married in The Godfather 2 that got shot, that got blew up in the car. The woman Apollina. that- this is what goes on in my mind before I'm about to get on a plane with you to go on our first trip, even if it's no a business trip. No wonder why we're trip, always late. Even if it's a business <laughs> this trip. This everything. And this reminds me of when you touched my hair that wasn't my hair because it was weave. Your reaction to that, like there were levels of comfort that we checked off the boxes. This I feel like was very uncomfortable for like when a girl still to this day, of course, even though this is a story from our past to this day, my girlfriends are like, what do you do when they want to like touch your hair and kiss you for the first time? Or when you wake up and like you have to take your clip in hair out. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? So anyway, I packed for my best. I waxed and like quaffed everything to the tits and to the nines and to diamonds, diamond status. We get in our car to the airport. And mind you, again, this was all last minute. So in her last minute, she still found time to go do all that because she did. She ran around all over town like the day before we left. I could have been getting ready for my prom, like same things that you do the salon and I, I and then I overpacked for that trip. So then what happens? Totally overpacked for the trip. There's something you guys don't know about me. I was a lot messier before, but I'm still messy. I can't help it, but like be that person that might lose she a train her wreck. phone. She a train wreck. I'm a train wreck. Traveling with her. I am is a wreck. Traveling with her. My, it's akin to like punishment. And you're just as bad. No, I'm easy as hell. No. And more importantly, I know what things are. She'll literally stick something in her pocket in front of you and then be like, where'd I just put that? <laughs> yes. Just, it's what? I what? can be looking at my phone and being like, You're like where's what my am phone? I doing? Where's my phone? Yes. Or lose very, it. very much. So when you have that type of kookiness, minute to minute could be very, very, very traumatizing. Then we get out of the Uber and we're in Orlando. So we've taken this 45 minute long Uber ride from the airport to this hotel and it was a nasty hotel. It was it was it was bad. Remember the cab driver told us, yo, you sure you stay in here? Exactly. <laughs> like, he was like, uh, this is not a, a nice hotel. This is not a good area. You I guess you be didn't here. read like any ratings. Yeah. Again, I looked for proximity and cheapness. We could have gotten bed mites from that shit. We could have for sure come home with some kind of yeah. a disease or a, a mite. Now, one of the things you have to know about my wife is that she has an irrational phobia fear of cockroaches. Like cockroaches. Cucaracha. Yeah, she's not, cucaracha. she's not scared of a lot. You know, I've I'm seen not, her. I'm not afraid of anything. I've seen her not be fearful when a lot of people would be fearful or especially. Thank you you know, someone from her upbringing, but she's not fearful except when it comes to the cockroaches. She can't handle it. And you walked into this hotel and- The roaches were pissed that we were in the room. Yeah, man. Like, what are you doing here? We're playing cards. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? Like, it get was out like, of here. And we had to sleep with the lights yeah. on. No, she but made- But why did we stay? Because this is so crazy. Like, were we both- in like comas? I know it seems like, but 2014 is a lot different from 22020. Technology's come a long way just in the last, there Ta wasn't, technology, technology, yeah, that's technology. Technology. Yeah, technology's come a very long way in the last, even just the last few years. There wasn't the ready-made available apps. Like Airbnb, if it existed, didn't exist on that level where we knew to like No, going. not Airbnb. Nothing was like- but There was a hotels app and hotels.com and there were reviews and there was- Yelp and for but some there reason, wasn't any availability because of the convention. It was the largest pet expo in the history of the country or the, the, in the world. So there was nowhere else to go. Everywhere else was booked up. I think we also decided that we weren't going to spend like $600. No, so we didn't even have that. You had no problem doing that once you saw the cockroaches. We had no problem upgrading, but you couldn't get anywhere. Those were the first rooms to go. The fact that you couldn't even get a room anymore in a hotel. Again, she's... You know, minimizing the size and scope of this pet expo. It's tremendous. It's the size of like five football fields. I don't think we meant like by no frills that we were going to have 
a family of wildlife in our hotel room and had to sleep with the lights on. It was crazy. I can't, like, I can't believe that place still existed. You know what I mean? Like, it's that place should have been closed down 20 years prior to that. Condemned. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So then my credit card had fallen out of my pocket while we were on the plane, and I don't find this out until later, which means that I don't have my main access. Like, I didn't, I'm not one of those people who travels with multiple cards, and I just needed that one, and it was lost. So then we have the Uber to take me to a local branch of our bank, and they provide me with an emergency temporary card. So the Uber is running, super kind. I don't know how we're paying him, but it's got to be a super expensive Uber because the airport to the branch of the bank and then to our nasty hotel. By this point, he's like, if they're bougie enough to have a bank account, then what are they doing at this hotel? For sure. This hotel is probably perfectly suited for like people who want by the hour rental, like a private place to do something wrong. Yeah, if you want to murder someone, it'd be a great place to play to bring them. Yeah, stash a body. I think it said in the Yelp review. I think it was. Yeah, on this the, is a great great place for murder. Too bad we didn't read the Yelp reviews. Yeah, great first. place. Like Norman Bates saw that hotel and was like, "That place is a dump." These days, you're way better of a researcher because I learned lessons from things like that. But I also remember that it was it was real difficult to get transportation there. Yes, because people don't have taxis, they have cars. That's why we that's a place yeah, where no, you don't like, go in Uber. Yeah, there was this is like pre-Uber. There was, you know, we got the air Uber from the airport because you could get an Uber from the airport. But right. wherever we were, we could not get any form of trip. Like cabs would not come. It's like my wife and I are in Orlando starving. So she and I go for a walk. Thinking that we can like walk to something as if it's like the streets of Queens, man, or New York, where you could just find like 10 Italian restaurants or Beverly Hills. Like we're going to run into like Il Pistaio and Porta Via and Cheesecake Factory. No, we are in a suburban area. Of yeah, it's like near the airport. There's the convention center. There's crocodiles there's and swampland. Yeah, there's nothing there, but it's flat land. So like you could see where the stores are, but it looks, it's like miles. So we're like, yeah, we're going to walk over to the store. We saw where there was a Walmart and something else we're like all right we're gonna walk to that and we get out on our trek and before we know we're like yo this is really far and i'm in heels still yeah like, she's because at this point era. in the relationship she didn't let me see her in anything but heels well uh, nobody saw me in anything but heels my shower saw me in my clear stripper yeah heels. i think you were wearing heels in the shower in the pool then too yes yeah. i would always wear the lucite yeah. seamless yeah. elongating for the leg we had to learn the hard way that there's no one that's going to pick us up, but we'll hoof it. And then as we started to hoof it, we were so starved that we ended up, what, rolling into Popeye's? In Popeye's. They had like some special, and I bought like a vat. It was like a bucket of fruit punch for like $3 or whatever it was. I thought it was a great deal. So I get this bucket of fruit punch, this trough full of fruit punch, and I'm sitting there with her, we're done eating, and now we got to trek it back to this fucking hotel. And I'm like, I'm not carrying this bucket of fruit punch with me, but it'd be a sin. Like, it'd be a sin to throw it out. I had maybe a glass of fruit punch out of this bucket. And someone else is sitting there, and he works there. You know, like, he works there, but he's on his lunch break. He's eating a sandwich. So I offer him, I tell him. Hey, buddy, do you want do you want my, <laughs> my leftover fruit punch? Do you want some of my so leftover fruit punch? So, so the look on my face. Yeah, she was. She said, "Oh my god, <laughs> I am so mortified right now. I can't even believe I'm here with you." He does not want your fruit punch. <laughs> I yeah, looked at she you. Ripped me. She ripped I looked me. at you and I go, "Did you just offer <laughs> that nice gentleman?" Your leftover fucking <laughs> soft drink? It was definitely for home use. It wasn't for eating in the restaurant. But she ripped me. She, the guy looked at me like I had. Like you I were was from Mars. Yeah, man. Yeah, that was. Uh, it was so weird of you to do that. But yeah, it took that trip to find that out about you. For whatever reason, we were walking down the street with like $3,000 cash. 
That was the which was another <laughs> random like yes, why why did yes, we need that much money like yes, these days I don't have yes, fifty cents to yes, my name yes, cash yes that happened after she lost the card so we go to the bank she gets a new card oh, the yeah. card's gonna work within like a few hours so we're like all right to be safe we'll both take out as much cash as we as can. You possibly can you yeah. know and listen you know it's not a nice day but it's it's tough to tell it's blue skies and sunshine everywhere. So it's tough to tell that you're in a bad neighborhood. You know what I mean? I had a, a ton of money on me, a bucket of fruit punch, because <laughs> I refused to throw the fruit punch out. So I walked back to the hotel with the fruit punch. Oh, man. We could have been in an affluent part of Orlando, but nobody walks. So the only people that are walking the streets were us. So anyone who would notice us would be like, who the fuck are those weirdos? And that's when a bus comes rolling down the street and we look at each other. We're like, are we getting on that bus? And you were like, are you willing to get on a bus? And I was like, of course. That might have been our first and last for the state of Florida. Oh, yeah. That for was For public tough. transportation. That was the best last form of public transportation we've taken in Florida, for sure. But you guys, all those things I took on the trip when I was packing back in LA, thinking this was going to be a romantic trip somewhere when like once the business part of the day was done, I'm still getting into bed with this man that I'm madly and newly in love with. So I pack aromatherapy. I've packed all of these like, you know, casual lingerie, like the white lace cotton innocent lingerie slip. And then once we get to the room and I see that it, there's like sticky pieces of floor, you can't walk barefoot. Yeah, you wouldn't even let us open our bags up. No. No, we weren't even allowed hell to open back. No. We even allowed to open back. Don't tell him no. Tell him hell no. And the, the best is, you know, a hotel's, their job is to accommodate. Like that's in the title. When she went to complain to the like to the front desk and you got to understand my wife is a professional at you know being the squeaky wheel and normally when she's squeaky she gets a lot of grease and Close she up, went in there get fed, honey. she went down there to yell and scream and they were like whatever you know like you know what i mean shit happens they're like sure ma'am yeah whatever man sorry don't let the door hit you you know so you want to leave you know what i mean sure ma'am we'll get right on top of that yeah I don't think there was even anyone at the front desk. Anyway, so once I see like we're dealing with sticky floors and actual bugs, then I can't even say the word CR because it's disgusting. Um, no, I don't want to unpack and get sexy. It was a little bit of a mood no, killer. No, we slept in our clothes. A little, we yes. slept in our clothes so with we the put lights all on. all of we my know. clothes on. We didn't even want to peel back the cover or the sheets. And there was like, cockroaches on the wall not just like you caught one right outside by the front door because it hit the street or the asphalt no they were there man they the were lights present. were on suffice it to say all night long until dawn and then we got the fuck out of there we were exhausted from the pet expo which we walked a lot and did we take julio I remember no, no, there were no dogs. We, we saw Ken and Lisa. LVP was there yes, with um, there. Jiggy and Ken, and that was really cute. So if you then go back home to LA and people ask you, how was your first trip together? Then you're right. When you say this was like all business, it ended up being a nightmare. Traumatic. But again, it was a great trip for a building block of our relationship because at this point in time it had been pretty much all rainbows and unicorns between us we end up pulling an all-nighter sleeping with the lights on because i was too scared to sleep with the lights off so at one point during this all-nighter that we were pulling we both doze off and oversleep so by the time that we wake up and get everything packed and this car is downstairs taxi who doesn't give a fuck we are late for the airport. Then we get to the airport and we fucking miss our flight. Oh, yeah, there was no credit. There other. was no like, oh, we'll use this ticket toward. No, no, no. We paid for a brand new ticket on some extra airline, which meant more dragging your bags from one airport terminal to another airline terminal. And then having to wait and the seats were uncomfortable and was hot and the layovers and we were hungry and bloated and the cortisol was so high because your stress hormone Cortisol, one of them anyway, will literally bloat you and make you dehydrated. But when telling our story and you talk about, you know, our first trip together, 
It was a nightmare. It was the trip from hell. But again, it was also, you know, it was a, f- a, a fundamental building block of our relationship because it, it was two days of tired, not sleeping, aggravation with the other. We're blaming each other. for So, so it was basically two days of turmoil and fighting. And here we are still here today. So we got through it. You know, we you made tested, it to the other our side. Our relationship was tested. Yeah, it was tested. Uh, it was very much so tested intensely for a three-day period. And, you know, we came out on the other side. And I think we are better for it. Definitely, because before you're willing to walk down the aisle with someone and marry them, you want to know that you've experienced things that will test your character, test your dynamic, test your chemistry, test your crisis management together as a couple. Like what's going to happen when the shit hits the fan and you've lost your money and you have no access to like safety and there's all these layers of stress how are we going to interact with each other in a way that are we going to kill each other? Are we going to make each other cry? Are we going to like even jab the the dagger deeper into our whatever groin? Or are you going to rally and find your way to like one of you maybe sometimes is the one that rescues? Then there are moments where I was like the voice of reason and then you would give me a hug and tell me that you love me and like but of course we would fight and we're melting. Like yeah, you have but w- within spiraling the bi- within too. the bickering, there was uh, there was still enough joy. There was still enough laughter because you and I can always find stuff to laugh at. That's why we're here together. That's why it's always worked because even in the darkest periods, we still always find stuff to laugh at. It is the darkest before the dawn. You mm. know that's what they say. Yeah. Honestly, like if you are in a relationship and you can remind yourself to laugh at stuff when shit's going down, if you can like tie a little reminder bracelet, like a thread to say, I need to remember to laugh in sticky situations. This is my man. We're trying to have fun for the rest of our lives together while navigating through life. So we could be, you know. Take a pause, take a beat. Yeah, take a breath. Sometimes you might need to walk away from each other, but always try to find something, a common denominator, something that you both laugh at, something that you both find funny. And if you could get back to that, you could keep moving forward. What I noticed we used to do more was one of us would get the other one worked up and then it would get back and forth. It would be like when you say to someone like, calm down, relax, like that's never going to work. So we would do that more for longer. Whereas nowadays I feel like, one of us does that, and then the other one takes a reset, and we get better. All right, guys. So now we want to hear from you. My wife asked her followers this week about uh, what it's like to take your first trip, or do you have any questions regarding taking your first trip with your significant other? First question comes from Sarah. I just got back from my first trip with my boo. Must say it was super disappointing because he didn't have anything planned. No restaurant reservations, no activities, nothing. Was that on me? So I think that means like straight from jump, you need to decide, are you going to be the planner or the planny? Also, don't you think both of you can be involved in planning? Because I don't like it when people try to woo you and court you. And then they're always saying like, what do you want to do? No, no, no. A man has to have a plan. That includes when you go on trips. I think it depends on each person. You know, some guys are easygoing and don't really care. And, you know, other women are a little bit more picky. Or the same thing can be reversed, you know, where the the guy has tons of things he wants to do. And uh, the girl doesn't want to leave the room. But, babe, like, you just got off a plane. Don't play. Don't try me. Don't test yourself. You want things to remain smooth. You want to be able to have a good time. It's just like... But you also don't want to, you know, if you're someone that you get up every day and you go to work and you have, you know, your schedule and you have things that you have to do, you don't want to get off the plane and feel like there's a gun to your head, you know, to that you're going to miss this and you have to get to that. And you're, you're constantly running to fill in the time when a lot of people just want to relax and, you know, sit in bed, watch TV, or maybe uh, sit by the pool and drink margaritas. So then I, you should I think know in advance that you're going yes. to fly by the seat of your pants. You're going to be like, hey, babe. So do we have any reservations for like Vegas or the city said city? You have to be like, if you say no or yes, and I care what your response was, then it's upon me to say, actually, I think we should have some reservations to keep you on the safe side. Uh, If you don't have that type of thing worked out, you might find that out on your first trip. 
Our second question is from Mandy in Minneapolis. I love you, by the way, Mandy. And I love that name. My, my, we've been together for six months. Should I be covering the whole trip? Um, okay. Money questions. I love to give financial advice. I think in a relationship, by the time you take your first trip, you've already been seeing how it's going. Are we going Dutch? Like, are we taking turns? Cause like with Tommy and me, we didn't have expenses in the equation because he was coming over to my house and we were ordering pizza and we would have, I would have like the boons were already in the freezer or the fridge. Right, Tommy? Yeah. But then like by the time we like a man takes me out for the first time to a restaurant, I would expect him to pay for the whole thing. Because if every time you're coming over to my house, then I'm going to trouble. I'm making sure there's fresh cut flowers. I'm making sure the diptyque candles are burning and I'm at home. So as a Persian, I have to be a good hostess and provide a spread of whatever we're having. But then once we step out that door, you're paying for everything. And then if it comes to a trip, it's a different story. I think you with the trip, a trip, I think it depends on whose idea the trip was. If it's a mutual idea, like we should take a trip together, then yeah, we could, we should sit down and work out the expenses and see how, you know, what we're willing to spend. But if it's something like, I want to take you away, then it's, uh, it's a little bit incumbent upon the person who had the suggestion. I like that. I, I respect that because then you could say, I want to show you something like maybe in a relationship, like one of you has been really overworked and you've been absent and you want to come back and you want to make it up to the guy and you want to be like, Hey, I care. So maybe since I've been the busy one for the last three weeks, I can actually plan a weekend and now we can like catch up and have QT and let me actually take care of everything, honey. Yes, I, I think that that's the way to do it. Uh, the final question for this week, we, um, I'll, I'll go with, uh, I'm nervous about sharing a bathroom in a hotel room for the first time. How do I prep for this? That's a great question. <laughs> that's, that's, that's actually the question of the week. You know what I hate? How about... It's when you have that crossover from like, he's never even heard me pee. Let me tell you this. Don't pull the, I'm going to go take a shower and then lock yourself in the room for fucking two hours. And when you walk out, it don't smell like anything got clean in there. <laughs> smells, okay, so if they don't, wanted... Don't but yeah, yeah, I, I'm going to, you know, ooh, I, I'm getting, I'm going to go take a shower, like random too, you know what I mean? It's like middle of the afternoon, but, but yeah, I'm going to... Don't do that. First of all, such a liar because it's not what we do. We're very smart. We know to light a match. We know to do the shower last. Yeah, but then it just you smells know, like a match. What that's do you think actually that, not even true. So what first do you of think, all- Do we think, oh, wow, is someone having a campfire in here? We're having s'mores around the toilet bowl? That's what are we funny. doing? I don't like you right <laughs> yeah, now. No, but I mean, this come on. This, no, no, no. We're because- just not, we're, trust me, most men don't want to think of their wife's or their significant others going in there and taking a, you know, pinching a loaf. So you like, you just, you kind of separate it, you know? My advice would be, you know, don't, um, don't eat spicy food. Don't eat things that are going to come shooting out the other end rather quickly. No, that's not even, it doesn't even have to get to that. There are women that won't even go to the bathroom for five days because they know they're going to yeah, be- take uh, like the, the, what do you call those? The, an anti-diarrheal. Yeah, yeah. And so, constipate an yourself. Something like that. Yeah. So the thing that you have to do is go to the hotel lobby bathroom. That's what you do. That's, see, that wife is genius. The and then you just genius. say, oh, I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to make a quick <laughs> phone call. I have a quick whatever cameo to do. Trust me, I'm you can remove call my the mom. word quick. You can, you can you don't have to keep saying quick. We know you're going to be gone for a minute. But if you're talking about flushing in a situation where it's like an Airbnb and you don't have a lobby bathroom in a hotel, then you have to do what's called the concurrent flush pee. So you're flushing as you release and that way it'll never even sit. It just is moving right down to the sewer system or whatever. That's how you avoid creating any um, odor whatsoever if it's a number two. And then that's also why you can bring, um, you know, like really pungent like 
air fresheners that are designed for that. Girl, this is the 2021s, honey. You need to catch the fuck up with what women do because we know how to handle shit. Dumping for dummies. And it's nothing to do with s'mores and fucking campfires, okay? So goodbye and good night. Thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Till the Dirt with Tommy and MJ. We're so happy you're coming on this journey with us. It would mean so much to us if you would rate our show, give us five stars, leave a nice comment, and subscribe so that you can stay up to date with all our new episodes. You could also follow us on all platforms at Till the Dirt with Tommy and MJ. See you next week.